All right, guys, starting a new um, section chapter here, um, chapter nine, which is on sequences and series. Okay, um, we are going to start here by talking about 9 2, which is about sequences. Here's some definitions. If you want to pause the video and copy these down, you should. Okay, but these are just some general words that we're going to be using a lot during this section in this chapter. First is a sequence. In general, a sequence is a list of numbers that's formed using a pattern. Okay, I could create a sequence very easily here, um, maybe like this. Okay, um, the pattern here would be they go from one number to the next. I'm adding three each time. Okay, this is an arithmetic sequence because an arithmetic sequence is one that's formed by adding or subtracting the same value each time. It's important that it's addition or subtraction. That's the key to the definition of an arithmetic sequence. Now, the common difference is that number that's being added or subtracted each time to form the sequence. So in this case, the common difference would be to plus 3, right? To go from one number to the next here, I'm always adding 3. Okay, that would be my common difference. Now, we've got to get a few notations down, okay? They like to call sequences, a lot of times they call it sequence A, okay? So if we said that this was, in fact, sequence A, they would call this term A of 1 or A subscript 1. That means it's the first term of sequence A. The 5 would be A of 2 or the second term of sequence A. The 8 would be A of 3 or the third term of sequence A. Okay. Um, if I maybe if I asked you what is a of six, this would be a of three, a of four, a of five. I would need to add three one more time to get seventeen. That would be the sixth term of a or a of six. Okay. Now there's um, two types of formulas that we're going to write for these, okay? One is very useful, one is, to be honest, really not useful, okay? The first is what's called the recursive formula. The recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence is just a description of that formula, okay? And it is written like this, um, A of N. Okay, A of N means the nth term of a, meaning whatever term you're looking for. So this could say this is a method to find whatever term that you are looking for. Hmm? Yes, that's all right. You're fine. Yeah, you're good. Um, so to find any term of a, the nth term, meaning whatever term you want to find, okay, it goes like this. Okay, let's label what these things mean. Okay, first of all, D stands for that common difference number. Okay, so I want you to understand what this means. To find the nth term of it, the recursive formula is that you take the first term and you add n minus 1 times the common difference. So let's, let's look at what happens here, okay? Before, we were talking about finding the sixth term of A, okay? The sixth term of this sequence, sequence A, we said is 17. Now, how did we get there, okay? Well, to get to that term, I want you to realize that what we did was we started at the first term, A of 1. We started the first term, and to get the sixth term, we added the common difference, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So to get the sixth term we added three one less time, five times. That's what this says. Is that the nth term, in this case we are saying that the sixth term was equal to the first term two plus six minus one. Five times we added that common difference of three. Okay, that's how I got the sixth term. Now, when you're, pl when you're writing a recursive formula, all you need to do is plug in for the A1 and the D. So if I wanted the recursive formula here, I'd say that the nth term of that sequence 
is equal to a of 1, the first term, 2, plus n minus 1 times 3. That's the recursive formula. Okay, sometimes, just so you know, what the book does is it distributes that. So it might call the recursive formula 3n minus 1. Okay, you could get that. Now, the more useful thing to be able to write is what's called the explicit formula. Okay, what's called the explicit formula. Hold on, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. I just messed up this whole video. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the explicit formula. You're going to erase this, sorry. This is the explicit formula. Okay? And what the explicit formula does, it allows you to find any term of the sequence. So let's go back. Sorry, this is the explicit formula. I'm very sorry for this. This is the explicit formula. Okay? The explicit formula, let's say that of this, let's say I wanted to find A of 53. If I want the 53rd term of A, okay, what I would do is I would just take the first term, too, and I would add 53 minus 1 times 3. So I would say that the 53rd term of A is equal to 2 plus 52 times 3. I could type that exact thing now into my calculator, okay, and do 2 plus Fifty two times three, and the fifty third term of this sequence would be a of fifty three. The fifty third term is one hundred and fifty eight. So, an explicit formula, right, like we're just saw, this explicit formula can be used to find any term in the sequence. You can just jump to that term, okay? Now, what I accidentally wrote the recursive formula. It's a lot less useful, okay? The recursive formula is just a description of the sequence that you're looking at, okay? It's just a description. What the recursive formula is, is it says that the nth term of A is equal to A of n minus 1 plus D. And all you've got to do is plug in for the D here, which is, again, the common difference. What this is saying is that to find the any term, the nth term, what you need is the term right before it, n minus 1, and you just add that common difference, which is like, duh, yeah, that's what's happening. So it says like this. If I wanted the 10th term of A, what I would need is, I would need the A of 10 minus 1, I would need the 9th term, and then I would just plus 3. Yeah, that describes the pattern. If I want to write the recursive formula, or s yes, if I wanted to write the recursive formula of this sequence, it would be that the nth term is equal to the n minus 1 term plus 3. That's all I need to do. That's the whole recursive formula right there. Okay. All right, the last thing we learned is what's called the arithmetic mean. Which it is. The arithmetic mean is just how you find any mean, okay? The arithmetic mean is x plus y over 2. Add two numbers up, divide it by 2. Okay? Add it up, then divide it by 2. Now, let's say that I've got this. I'm going to make this up. This last type of problem that you need to know how to do. Okay, let's say that we've got um, 9 blank 20. And you know that this is an arithmetic sequence. They tell you it's an arithmetic sequence. To find this blank, you're just going to write a form, or write an equation. Okay, you know this is arithmetic, so you know that you start with nine, that you added some value d, then you added some value d again, and you got here. So let's write this equation. We started with nine, we added d, then we added d again. We added two d, and we ended or equal twenty. Okay, so now I'm going to solve this for d. 2d equals 
11. So I know that my common difference now is 5.5. So now I can fill in the box. 9 plus 5.5 is 14.5. 14.5 plus 5.5 is 20. I could do this again here with one more problem. Okay, let's say that maybe we're missing two numbers this time in this sequence. Let's say it goes all the way up to 100. And they want me to find these missing numbers. Okay, so just ask yourself what happened. Well, I know it's arithmetic. So I know I started at that 5. I added D. I added D to get here. I added D. I ended at 100. So I started at 5. This time I added 3D and I finish at 100. I'm going to solve for D. Ninety-five divided by three. That means that D is thirty-one and two-thirds. So let's fill in the blank. Five plus thirty-one and two-thirds is thirty-six and two-thirds. Thirty-six and two-thirds plus thirty-one and two-thirds is sixty-eight and a third. 68 and a third plus 31 and a third is 100. Okay? All right. Those are all the types of problems you'll see today. Let me know if you need some help.